Hi guys, welcome back. This is the Redmi Note 7 and it is one of the best budget phones I have used. There are a lot of options in the budget segment and because of that, it's really tough to choose one. But from the time that I've spent with this device, I can easily recommend it. First, the pricing of the device is really aggressive. The variant I have here is the 3GB RAM, 32GB storage variant and it is selling for 9,999 Indian rupees and there is also a 4GB RAM and 64GB storage variant which is selling for 11,999 Indian rupees. And for this price, you're getting a Snapdragon 660 processor, 6.3 inch Full HD Plus display, 4000 mAh battery, etc. Usually to hit this price tag, companies do compromise on certain things like the camera, the display, the build quality and all possible areas where they can cut to reduce the price. But it's not the story with this device, especially the build quality. This is one of the phones which has a very premium build. Just hold it and the first impression you'll have is that it's an expensive phone. The phone is just 8.1 mm thick and it weighs 186 grams. They have used glass on the front and rear which is Gorilla Glass 5 and it is a 2.5D curved glass which makes the design seamless. The sides are not metal and in fact it's plastic but it doesn't feel cheap. The buttons are tactile and responsive even though it's made of plastic. Since the rear is glass, it attracts a lot of fingerprints but use one of Xiaomi's perforated case and the problem is solved. So overall, for the design and build quality, the Redmi Note 7 is one of the best for this price. Everything is well put together and there is no gap or flex. This phone might not have the best internal frame to make it a very strong device and if you apply a lot of pressure and try to bend it, it might fail but during your normal day to day use, the build is strong enough and you won't have any such issues. Xiaomi also didn't skip on the ports used. You get a headphone jack, two microphones, a IR blaster, a single border firing speaker and also a USB-C charging port. USB-C is becoming a standard and it's great to see this in a budget phone. The speaker is a really good speaker. It gets sufficiently loud and is clear. It's a single border firing speaker and you might accidentally cover it but if it's not covered, it does the job pretty well. Same with the headphone jack. The output from it is also good. The display used here is also a very good quality display. It's a 6.3 inch LCD display with a resolution of 2340 by 1080 which gives a pixel density of 409 ppi. The aspect ratio is 19.5 is to 9 and the display has this teardrop style notch which Xiaomi calls dot notch and the display has very thin bezels all around except for this bottom chin. But still the display looks nice with this curved corners. It also gets sufficiently bright at 450 nits of maximum brightness and at dark environments it gets sufficiently dim. The viewing angles are also good with no noticeable color shifting and also the auto brightness sensor used is a really good one and it does this job really well. Xiaomi did use a really good quality display on the Redmi Note 7 and watching media, playing games etc all look really nice on this display. That takes us to the processor which as I said earlier is the Snapdragon 660 processor. It's a 14 nanometer octa core processor in which there are 4 high performance cores clocked at 2.2 GHz and there are 4 high efficiency cores clocked at 1.8 GHz. And for the GPU used it's Adreno 512. And with this specs the phone performs really well. The default launcher is a custom one which is running on MIUI version 10.2.6 and the Android version is Android Pie. This launcher doesn't have any app drawer and it feels kind of like iOS but the launcher is actually not bad. There are some cool stuff like a full gesture control which is not butter smooth but it works well and overall day to day tasks like scrolling through menu or home screen everything is smooth because the processor has sufficient processing power. The version I am using is the 3GB RAM variant and the RAM management is fine. If it's light apps, 5 to 6 apps stay open in the memory but if you load a heavy game or something like that then the intense RAM management kicks in and all the apps have to reload. And talking about heavy games like PUBG and Asphalt 9, they both work well without any issues. You can see some frame drops but still the gameplay is smooth and if you're wondering the default graphics setting for PUBG is medium. And one more thing is that the device doesn't get that warm while doing intense tasks which is a really good thing. So for the performance, you won't have any issues from the Redmi Note 7. Now if you get the 3GB RAM variant like the one I got, I'm not worried about the RAM management but the storage it's just 32GB out of which you'll be getting only approximately 22GB which is usable. 
You can expand it using a micro SD card, but then the problem is you lose the second SIM slot. I just use one SIM, so I have a SD card installed, which I am using for saving photos. And after installing all the apps that I use, I still have 12.39 gigs available. So 32 GB is fine for me. But if you're someone who want to use dual SIM, then I wouldn't recommend this version. And I would strongly suggest you get the 4 GB RAM, which has 64 GB internal storage. And yes, this device supports VoLT on both the SIM slot and hence you can use dual SIM on both the SIM slots. So now checking the battery, the Redmi Note 7 has a 4000 mAh battery, which is a pretty big battery. But some of its competitors have a 5000 mAh battery. And for the battery life, if you are a heavy user, you can make it through a day without any issues. I usually get more than 6 hours of screen on time, which is a good thing. And while playing games like PUBG for approximately 30 minutes, battery drops around 8-9%. to That's fine, but I didn't like the standby time of the device. One day at night when I was going to bed, I had around 80% of battery left. But when I woke up the next day, I was surprised to see that the battery was at 74. So there was around 6% battery drop. And at that period, mobile data was turned on and maybe it's because of that. But still, I really wish Xiaomi will optimize the standby time to make the battery life better. If you are a light user, you can easily get two days of use with full charge. And when it comes to charging, the phone supports Qualcomm Quick Charge 4, but the included charger in the box is not a quick charger and it's just a 10 watt charger. And to fully charge the device from 10% to 100%, it takes around two hours, five minutes. And charging for 30 minutes with the included charger, you will get 26% of battery. And also while charging with the included charger, the phone gets slightly warm. So for the battery life and charging, it's fairly good. So till now, Xiaomi hasn't skipped on anything. And in fact, they've done everything perfectly with the Redmi Note 7. But we didn't touch one thing till now, which is the camera. And that's a place where manufacturers do usually cut cost. And sadly, it's the same story here. Don't get me wrong. It's not a camera that's not usable, but when you compare it with its competitors, it doesn't perform that well. First for the specs, the rare has dual camera setup where the main sensor is a 12 megapixel sensor with f2.2 aperture and the secondary camera is just a 2 megapixel depth sensor for portrait shots. There is a flash just below the camera and the photos that the main sensor captures are good if you have sufficient light. Now because of the f2.2 aperture, shots look a bit dark to my liking but again if there is sufficient light available, the shots retain good detail and the colors are also good. The dynamic range is good but not great and the portrait shot it also looks nice if there is good light available. But take the light away you can actually see the camera struggling. Shots are much darker especially if there is a person in the shot and same is the case with indoor shots in artificial lighting where shots are a bit soft and grainy. So photos from the right camera are good if there is good lighting. Same is with the video. If there is good lighting Videos look pretty nice, even though the maximum video resolution is 1080p at 60fps. There is EIS or electronic image stabilization available in videos, but it's only if you shoot at 1080p 30fps. And actually, I feel that's the better setting because videos in 1080p 60fps looks a bit jittery. Coming to the front camera, it's a 13 megapixel shooter with f2.0 aperture, and selfies are crisp in well lit environment, and you also have a portrait option which works well. But in low light or in indoor lighting, the selfies are just average. The front camera can also be used for face unlocking, which is very fast, but it's not a secure option. And also it doesn't work in dark environments. So overall, I would say that the camera performance of this phone is just fine. It's surely usable and you can take some good shots, but there are other options in this price range with better camera setup. And if you're getting this phone, please do keep in mind that the camera is not what this phone shines at, but it's all the other things that makes this a really good budget phone. For this price, I feel this phone does everything else better than its competitors. Then there are some extra stuff which add to give a better user experience like the notification LED light, a very good fingerprint scanner which is fast and reliable and the phone is splash proof so in case of accidental splash or spill, the phone might survive. Then the earpiece used here is also a good one and it's loud and clear. This is my first Redmi phone and I've heard from other Redmi users that there is a problem with Redmi phones and it's the ads. Well, I haven't faced any such issue till now and it might be because I opted out of the user experience program and I don't use any of Xiaomi's default apps because I already have alternatives for all those apps and I've also disabled the app vault. And one more thing is that this device supports Wideband L1 
so you will be able to stream in HD on platforms like Netflix and Amazon Prime, but it's not turned on yet and hopefully it will be enabled in a future update. That's all about the Redmi Note 7. But the main question is, should you buy one? This is a really good budget phone and I do want to recommend it. But it has a competition from Redmi itself, which is the Redmi Note 7 Pro. Now, to make it more understandable, this is the pricing of the Redmi Note 7 and the Redmi Note 7 Pro. And if you check it, it's not much of a difference. If you're not a heavy user and you have set your mind to get the base variant of the Redmi Note 7, which is selling for 9,999 Indian rupees, then that's fine. But do keep in mind that the available storage to the user is just 22 GB. And if you want to use dual SIM, then you can't expand the storage. But if those things are an issue for you, then the next option for you is to get the 4 GB RAM and the 64 GB variant of the Redmi Note 7, which is selling for 11,999 Indian rupees. And when you spend that extra money, what you're getting is lots more storage and an extra gig of RAM. But then you're in close range with the Redmi Note 7 Pro's base variant, which has 4 GB of RAM and 64 GB of storage, and it's selling for 13,999 Indian rupees. And if you spend that 2,000 extra, you're actually getting everything good about the Redmi Note 7 with a better processor and most importantly, a much better rear camera setup. So that makes the Redmi Note 7 a tough one to recommend. And I'm gonna end it like this. That is, if you're on a very tight budget and you're not worried about the camera performance, you can go for the Redmi Note 7 and it's actually better than the other options available in the same price range. This is surely a great budget phone. But as I said before, if you can spend that extra money, do get the Redmi Note 7 Pro. That's all for this video guys. Hope you liked it. If so, please do hit the like button and please do subscribe. See you again in the next video. Till then, bye.